Welcome to my front room for this concert of uh, 20th century clavichord music by Herbert Howells. I'm uh, playing a 20th century clavichord by the firm of Robert Morley of Lewisham. Uh, a clavichord is a domestic keyboard instrument really. It's not an instrument for the concert hall and so in these unusual circumstances in which we find ourselves, it seems appropriate uh, to be performing uh, from home uh, on a domestic instrument like this. The uh, clavichord, uh, the, the sound is produced by a hammer on the key hitting two strings uh, for each note, um, or more specifically on this instrument, a single string which goes round a pin at the end and comes back. Uh, that gives a very warm and rich sound. Uh, it also makes tuning uh, tricky and uh, the instrument as well is adapting to changed circumstances in that it's being played a lot more than it's used to. Um, so um, it, it's, it's had a few growing pains and so forgive me if uh, occasionally the, uh, the tuning is a little wayward or uh, there's a couple of notes that have been sticking as well, um, but I'm, I'm sure we can cope with that. Um, uh, the clavichord also has, uh, has a history as, as a practice instrument for organists, interestingly, and uh, J.S. Bach, we think, had one, uh, a, a pedal clavichord, in fact, with a, a pedal board like an organ. Um, so, uh, Howells himself uh, was an organist as, as well as a composer, and uh, just a, a small a uh, tenuous connection here is that Howells had the uh, diploma of the Royal College of Organists, um, which would have been validated uh, with the seal of the college, which is uh, this wonderful piece of ironmongery sitting behind me here. Um, so you've had uh, the first two movements already of Lambert's clavichord. Uh, this is a sequence of 12 short pieces dedicated to the uh, English portrait photographer and instrument maker, Herbert Lambert. And uh, Lambert and Howells were good friends. They met in 1923 when Lambert produced a series of portrait photographs of modern British composers. Uh, Howells was one of these composers and that was how they initially met. And a few years later, in 1927, Lambert built a clavichord for Howells and uh, in gratitude for this, Howells then wrote this, this set of pieces. And um, these pieces as well, in, in a way, form a series of portraits in musical form of uh, people that uh, Howells knew, uh, that each piece is dedicated to a different person. And um, they're very interesting because they, they hark back to uh, Tudor form. Um, Howells himself said that, uh, and I quote, all my life I've had this strange feeling that I belonged somehow to the Tudor period, not only musically but in every way. Uh, Vaughan Williams even had a theory that I was the reincarnation of one of the lesser Tudor luminaries. And uh, this sequence of pieces then is, is an early manifestation of that aspect of his personality. He uses archaic forms, um, archaic titles, and even the style of, of the titles is similar to, to what you would find in collections such as the Fitzwilliam Virginal book. And uh, they're all very charming pieces, and, and they tell us a lot about Howells as a composer, but also about the people that he associated with, his, his friends and colleagues. Uh, the first two pieces which you've already heard uh, were Lambert's Fireside, which is dedicated to Herbert Lambert, and uh, was written, in fact, at his fireside uh, in his house outside Bath. And then Fellows' Delight uh, for Edmund Fellows, uh, the scholar of Tudor music and the uh, expert on the English Madrigal School. I'll move on now to uh, the next two pieces, which are Hughes's Ballot and Wortham's Ground, both of them uh, dedicated to music critics uh, in Howell's circle. Uh, Hughes was an Irish composer and arranger and uh, music critic of the Telegraph. Uh, he also studied, as Howells did, at the Royal College of Music.
The next three movements are dedicated uh, first to the conductor Malcolm Sargent, Sargent's fantastic sprite. Then uh, Foss's Dump, a slightly bizarre title. Um, uh, this was a, 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 a form uh, and a, a title which implies a sort of mental perplexity and melancholy. And uh, there's a theory that this is maybe the English equivalent um, of the tombeau in French music, uh, in other words, a piece written in memory of somebody who has died, uh, which is slightly odd because um, uh, Hubert Foss, the dedicatee of this, was very much alive at the time, um, although he was uh, somebody who, who appeared to be uh, have a, a troubled personality. Um, uh, Howells did, in fact, give the eulogy at his funeral uh, in the 1950s. Um, he was uh, another pianist and composer and also musical editor at Oxford University Press who published this collection, uh, which is probably how he ended up uh, having one of the pieces dedicated to him. Um, uh, then uh, after that, we have My Lord Sandwich's Dream, uh, which is a toast uh, to the Earl of Sandwich.
We now have Samuel's heir, which was dedicated to the pianist Harold Samuel, uh, who was a great interpreter of Bach, and uh, he was also a very influential piano teacher. Uh, he was Benjamin Britten's piano teacher, in fact. Uh, then we have Delamere's Pavan, uh, which is for Walter Delamere, the poet, uh, who was also a great friend and collaborator of Harold's.
So we come to the final three movements. Uh, the first of these three is Sir Hugh's Galliard, uh, dedicated to Sir Hugh Allen, uh, who's Professor of Music at Oxford and also uh, Director of the Royal College of Music. We then have H.H. His Fancy. Um, this is one piece in the collection which is not dedicated to anybody else because Howells uh, reserves it for himself. And uh, it's very interesting because it's really the, the composer's indulgence almost. Uh, it's by far the most uh, chromatic and dissonant of the pieces. And it's also the most highly structured. It's a very dense fugue. And uh, so we, we really see Howells uh, letting his, his creativity flow in this movement. Um, we can see that he, he really uh, was greatly influenced by um, this, uh, this mode of writing and it's something that he came back to uh, several times later in his career and he produced two further volumes uh, of clavichord pieces, uh, volumes one and two of Howell's clavichord uh, much later in his career and they follow the same pattern. Um, we finish off uh, with Sir Richard's toy. Uh, this is for uh, Sir Richard Terry of Westminster Cathedral. Uh, he was a great influence in Howells uh, as a student and he inspired the composition of the Mass in the Dorian mode, uh, which was the first of Howells' uh, compositions to be presented professionally. And uh, this again it is a piece with very strong uh, children influences. Um, so uh, I hope you enjoy these final three movements of Lambert's Clavichord.